welcome to my channel and i'm back with you once again with another video of xpn 11 and uh, today i will be focusing on vor navigation ILS approach uh, initially i did a video i think 10 days back which was uh, based on vor navigation and i also uh, carried out uh, the landing on the basis of vor navigation but today i'm going to mix vr navigation with ILS approach uh, that can be done if uh, uh, the arrival runway is equipped with the ILS system. That's the instrument landing system. Uh, so you can easily do this. Um, it's not a big uh, science behind it. All you have to uh, know the basics of viewer navigation and ILS approach and anybody can do that. Even if you're a beginner, you will be able to do it. Uh, so let's uh, get to the basics. First of all, we have to make the flight plan. Uh, for the flight planning purpose, I'm using skyvector.com. Before we move further, I would like to tell you that this video is only for the people who are actually learning to fly the flight simulators. It is not for the expert people. I'm not an expert in aviation or flying. Uh, whatever I've learned is through YouTube videos <laughs> and uh, the resources available on the internet. Uh, I'm also not an expert, uh, but uh, still I just try to uh, come online and uh, share whatever I've learned just to make uh, this flight simulator more fun and uh, easy to fly. Uh, so if you're looking for something professional, obviously this video is not intended for you. And if you are new to the flight simulator and just want to do it for fun, you are at the right place. Uh, today I will be flying uh, from Islamabad to Karachi. Islamabad is here, um, up north in Pakistan. And I will be flying towards Karachi, that's in the south of Pakistan. The flight time is around about uh, 2 hours and 20 minutes, uh, maybe 30 minutes. Uh, but uh, obviously this video I will be cutting down a bit. Uh, let's uh, type in um, uh, the departure airport over here in this uh, departure box. Uh, if you click flight plan, this window will open. So click OPIs. Okay. And press enter. So here is uh, the Istanbul airport. That's OPIS. Uh, before we uh, move on, I would also like to tell you that there are three options or three views of the map in Sky Vector. World High, world low and world vfr uh, world high and world low you actually use uh, for the gps navigation and uh, world vfr you use it for the visual references because uh, this is a vfr stand stands for if i'm not wrong it stands for visual flight reference so if you're uh, flying your plane visually uh, this is the best option to use uh, so you will be using a world vfr option and you can click it over here so what is a VOR? VOR basically um, a radio, um, a station, which you can call in simple words, uh, that's placed, placed uh, at uh, different airports or uh, different places. And the pl plane actually flies towards this radio uh, frequency. Let me show you. So if you zoom in, you will see this sign, this uh, square box, obviously box is square with a hexagon in it. And uh, this is actually the VOR. If you right click this option, you will see uh, the radio frequency for this VOR. VOR stands for very high frequency omnidirectional range radio. Uh, so this is uh, the breakup of it. It took me a long time to learn this. So it is VHF omnidirectional range radio. So uh, what the plane does is it flies towards this radio frequency. Uh, you set your plane heading and the radio frequency of the navigation radio to this frequency and then you start to fly towards this radio. So this was uh, a technique that's, uh, that was used um, in the beginning when the GPS was not around. But still uh, planes use this view of navigation and it's a very nice way to navigate your way uh, through them uh, through the through through the flight path uh, so it is easy not that difficult few basic things to learn and uh, you will be able to uh, navigate your plane with the help of the VOR and then we will be performing an ILS landing over here um, the real world VOR navigation can be different from the VOR navigation that I'm building up over here as I told you I am not an expert pilot I don't have any real world flying experience. All I've learned is through YouTube and resources available on the internet. Therefore, 
my knowledge is very limited uh, limited to the flight simulator uh, so that's why if you're looking for something really um, at uh, at the professional level then i think this is not the right video for you what we do is this we f we look at different viewers that are in the way of the um, uh, in the way of the flight path so let's say if you're flying from islamabad to karachi you have to find the vors here i can see that there is a, a, a vor in multan but you don't see the square or the box around this hexagon the reason is uh, this uh, vor is not equipped with dme dme is distance measuring equipment so if you are flying from Islamabad to Karachi and you have set this VOR as a direction for you that you have to fly in this direction, uh, then VOR gives you the direction and the DME, that's the distance measuring equipment, calculates the distance that's left uh, to cover. So if uh, a VOR is not equipped with a DME, I would not recommend to use it in the flight simulator uh, because then you will not... Uh, be able to calculate the distance that's left to cover. So I will be using uh, another VOR in the way that's uh, equipped with a DME. If you look at over here, there is this airport in Pakistan that's uh, Rahim Air Khan. And you can see a, a VOR over here uh, that's uh, uh, equipped with the DME. Here is the frequency and uh, RK. So I will be using this VR for the navigation. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to fly from Islamabad towards Rahim Al Khan, then towards Nawab Shah VR, and then towards Karachi VR. And as soon as we are near Karachi, I will switch to the ILS frequency in order to perform an ILS approach. So it's very easy. Let's make our flight plan. Um, OPS we have already entered, no, no need to enter OPKC. Uh, very simple to do simply select this airport let's zoom in for your ease right click and click plan so now you have RK uh, set in the flight plan RK that's the VOR then the next VOR right click Navapsha and right click Karachi so that's how you make your flight plan it's very easy to make a flight plan in Sky Vector if you want to do the VOR navigation. It's very easy to do it. You can even see uh, the points, RK, uh, that's Rahim, Rahim Yar Khan, uh, to Nawab Shah, to Karachi, and Z306 is the flight path, or the airway that we will be taking towards the Karachi airport. And over here you can see a straight line, and still, um, and over here you can see the flight path from Islamabad to Karachi. So it's very simple. Uh, now a few basic things to, uh, to mention over here. Every VOR has a radial. That's known as the VOR radial. Uh, and uh, it's uh, uh, set uh, towards the north. So the zero degrees on this uh, VOR radial is set towards north. So the zero degrees is over here and 360 obviously over here. So it's a complete 360 degrees. Uh, so you fly, you head towards uh, the VOR radial or you move away from the VOR radial. It's uh, like coming in inbound and outbound. Uh, so we will be using this radial for the direction. Okay. So if you look at this uh, diagram, uh, the sky vector flight path, you will see that you uh, once you are off, the runway you will be flying towards 202 degrees uh, so you will be flying towards uh, the Rahim Khan VOR at 202 degrees uh, that's the uh, that's reading on the VOR radial okay so that's it outbound yes obviously that's uh, that's uh, we will be flying out outbound and over here we will be entering at a different degree um, uh, to Rahim Yar Khan. Uh, so which you will learn obviously over a period of time once you are uh, making flight plans and uh, flying your planes. So uh, the frequency of this VOR is 
113.70 okay so let's go to x 11 and start a new flight select the boeing 737-800 that's the default plane and let's select uh, opis that's the istanbul airport that i will be using for this flight and uh, i will be flying out from 10 left runway selected uh, customize the weather um, manually configured done um, and uh, i'm not using any clouds because we want to keep uh, the visual reference because that's uh, what we are learning so if you cannot see anything we will not be able to fly vfr is actually carried out in clear weather if uh, it's cloudy it's rainy it's uh, uh, it's foggy or it's snowing obviously uh, then uh, the instrument flying references are used otherwise uh, when the weather is clear obviously you can do for you can do a visual reference uh, so time i'm setting up at uh, roughly at 8 in the morning that's uh, the time from the Sahabad airport when we will be taking off. Let's start the flight. Uh, so here we are in the cockpit. And uh, in this flight, I will not be using the FMS uh, because we are not uh, uh, using FMS for the flight planning. We are uh, carrying out the VR navigation. That's why I will not be entering the flight plan in the FMS. The first thing that we want to do is set the radio frequency for the navigation. Uh, so let's move on uh, to this panel, which uh, has the radio radio uh, frequencies. And you can see that it says nav, nav, which means these radio frequencies are for the navigation, these two. And these this uh, panel is for the uh, radio communication with the ATC. I will not be using the ATC in this flight, so we will be ignoring this part today. Uh, but we will be focusing on the, the navigation uh, part. Uh, so first of all, let's look at the radio frequency that is 113.70. So let's enter 113.70 over here. So you, that's the dial. Um, the, the big knob uh, changes the big numbers and the small knob changes the small numbers. So it's 113.70. You can use your mouse wheel for the changes. Yeah, so 113.70. Uh, click this uh, flip-flop button. Here you go. And now this is the active frequency. So 113.70 is the active frequency. And uh, once uh, the plane takes off, uh, this is the radio frequency that we will be tuned in. Okay. Now the heading. Let's open Sky Vector and see what was the heading. So if you can see, it is 202 degrees. Uh, there are two things uh, that you see in this cockpit. One is the course and one is the heading. Course is actually the direction in which we should be going, our, our course. And heading is actually where we are going. Uh, so the course is 202 right now. Let me give you an example. If I set this uh, course to 202. Okay, so it means that we are supposed to fly in the direction of 202 degrees uh, but right now we will be heading towards 254 so our course should be slightly towards the left but we are going uh, like straight 202 degrees is somewhere on the left uh, so what I'll do is this I'll also change the heading to 202 so it means uh, once we take off we should be heading in this direction so always set your course uh, because over here then um, in, 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 the, in this window, you will be able to see the direction in which you should be heading. Uh, so turn this knob. Right now, it's set to map by default. Uh, let's look at it. So it's set to map. Let's change it to VR because uh, today we will be doing the VR navigation. That's why uh, we are setting it to the VR. Now you can see this display has changed. There are two lines. One is the dotted line and one is the sorted line. We should be flying in the direction of the sorted line. We should not be flying in the direction of the dotted line because dotted line um, takes you away from the VOR and the sorted line takes you towards the VOR. Uh, so uh, you should be heading towards this direction. Right now the current um, heading of the runway is 98 degrees as uh, we said. Uh, the runway 10 left, 10 left in Islamabad is heading towards 98 degrees. So the moment we will take off, our course, 
is 202 degrees and we will be heading at 202 degrees. We will be following the course. Uh, the best advantage of setting up the course is this, that it gives you the direction in which you should be flying. You can see, okay? So let's get it back. So that's why it's important to set the course. And heading, obviously, as uh, I am using uh, this, uh, uh, I will not be using the LNAV option or the VOR LOC or any other option of navigation. I will be only using the heading selector. So that's why we have to give the heading. Once uh, we are airborne, you will see how it works. Okay. So this is the basic setting that you have to do. First of all, you have to enter the radio frequency and uh, you have to enter the course and the heading. Why we enter the heading and uh, the radio frequency? Now let me give you an example. Once uh, we take off from here, we have to actually uh, fly in this direction. So we can be heading in uh, the 202 degrees direction anywhere from here. So let's say if our plane is over here and we turn towards 202 degrees, we will be flying like this, parallel to this line, but not exactly towards the Rahim Khan VOR. Uh, this radio frequency actually tells us that where exactly this uh, uh, runway is is uh, is this VOR is in Rahim Ya Khan. Uh, this is something uh, basic I wanted to tell you right now, but once we take off, then uh, things will get uh, clear. So it's very easy to do this. Okay. Uh, nothing else you have to do. Just only turn on the flight directors. Very important to do. And uh, let's set the uh, altitude. Uh, that uh, will be thirty-eight thousand feet for this flight. Okay, 38,000 feet, okay, and the speed will be 250 knots, okay, so this is uh, uh, the basic setting that we wanted to do, just uh, lower the flaps by 3 notches, release the brakes, so the brakes are now released. You can see the flaps going down and great. That's it. Let's take this plane off the runway. It's very easy to fly your plane on VOR navigation. Once you know the basics, you can simply select the VORs towards which you will be flying. And um, at the end, while uh, you are about to land, you can set the ILS frequency for the ILS approach and then you can land your plan plane. It's very simple to do it and it's not that difficult. 140 knots, rotate. And uh, that's it. Gears up. flaps. Now I will be turning on the autopilot because I will be now focusing on um, the basics of flying. Vertical speed, let's set it to 2500 and let's select the heading selector. Now the plane is going in this straight direction obviously because we have not asked the plane to do the navigation on its own because if we are uh, if we have entered the flight plan in the L FMS uh, we should be using this option LNAV for the navigation. But right now, I will be uh, using this heading selector. And I've set the heading towards 202 degrees. That's the course, 202. So let's uh, fly towards this direction. As soon as I've selected the heading selector, you will see the plane has started to turn right towards the heading. Let's press this button you will see a button over here that's nav one nav okay so if i press this button what will happen once we are near the rahim yar khan vor you will start to hear uh, the morris code this morris code is mentioned over here so here's the morris code okay 
the frequency 113.7 and the Morse code so let's check 113.7 which is the active frequency over here and once we are near this uh, VOR we will hear this radio frequency and plus uh, over here a rectangular box will start to appear which will tell you that uh, you are heading in the right direction so let's see what happens now let's uh, reduce the vertical speed because the speed is not increasing I think I forgot to press this button. <laughs> what a mistake. Uh, though we are, as we are uh, focusing on the navigation, that's why the flying part is to be ignored. Small errors can happen because right now I'm focusing more on the viewer navigation and on, a, uh, and on its basics. So as the moment I was up in the air, I was supposed to actually press this vertical speed button. So now the vertical speed is 2,200 feet per minute. It's a long way to go. Now we are flying in the 202 degrees direction. You can see this uh, heading over here. It says 202. So far, this is it you have to do, and uh, now we have to wait for the uh, the signal from this VOR. As uh, it is a long way to go, if you press M, a map will open. That's the default map in the x 11, and you can see that we are heading in the direction of 202 degrees. I think somewhere in the in the halfway we will start to get the signals. So let's wait for the signals and uh, once we hear the signals or the beep of the Morse code uh, then I will proceed further from there. Uh, now we are at uh, 29,000 feet and uh, as soon as the plane crosses uh, the 30,000 feet mark we have to change the speed to mark. Uh, so let's change the speed to mark and you will see the speed in mark is 0 0.66 and in knots is 249 knots. So let's be, uh, set the speed to 0 0.66 knots and uh, once we are at 38,000 feet we will increase the speed to 0 0.80 mark. Uh, so always remember uh, to change your speed to mark once you are above the 30,000 feet mark uh, because then the speed keeps on changing. And uh, as you can see this thing uh, that the speed right now um, is reducing because we have a higher uh, vertical speed. So I will be reducing the vertical speed, the ascent of the plane, in order to increase the speed and maintain it at 0.66 mark or 242 uh, knots. The advantage of setting the speed at mark is this. Uh, that your plane actually adjusts the speed accordingly because uh, the higher at higher altitudes the the air is thin so once the air is thin uh, the speed is slightly uh, high so that's why your mark speed actually compensates uh, the speed if you keep on flying at 250 that's not the right way to do it now as soon as we are 38,000 feet we we might be flying at 220 knots not exactly at 250 knots uh, so this is the basic of uh, uh, using the mark and uh, because the speed then gets adjusted with the altitude. So now you can see the speed is increasing and uh, it's roughly at 230 knots, not exactly at 250 knots. So that's the advantage of setting uh, the speed to mark. Uh, 
so far we are not hearing anything from um, the Rahimia Khan VOR. Uh, no beep is audible. I'm just waiting for that. If we had uh, set Multan VOR, uh, then we could be, I think, hearing the beeps by now. Uh, but Rahimia Khan is bit far, so that's why the frequency of uh, uh, radio cannot be heard at this moment because the radio is bit far. But as soon as we are near this radio, in a certain range, then we will be able to hear the beeps and uh, then you will do the navigation. So you can see that uh, by setting the speed at 0.66 mark, the speed has not reduced to 217. Um, the higher we go, the slower the speed will be. So once I'm at uh, uh, 38,000 feet, I will change the mark speed to 0 0.80. Thirty six thousand feet, two thousand feet to go. There are many resources available on the internet uh, which you can just go and search and uh, you can read it. You can learn the basics of VOR, but um, if you uh, just uh, uh, follow all the procedures or the steps that I've followed in this video you will be able to do the VR navigation and then you can use sky vector uh, to fly from one point to another point and use different VORs in the way uh, for the flight planning thirty seven thousand four hundred feet six hundred feet to go and uh, soon the plane will be leveling off let's see how far we are from <laughs> what is this this is Dera Ismail Khan I think we are way off the course This is Dera Ismail Khan. No, I think we are on the course. This is Dera Ismail Khan and our plane is going over here. Let's see. Yes. I think we're heading in the right direction. We are not that far. So you can see that this is Dera Ismail Khan and this is how we are going. Oh, this is a Boeing 747-400 coming <laughs> in our way. So I think we are... Yes, I think we are going in the right direction. And the plane is somewhere here. Not that bad. So let's uh, wait for the frequency uh, to be audible. And uh, once uh, we are near uh, this VOR, the Rahim Al Khan uh, VOR, a rectangular box will also appear over here which will exactly tell us that are we heading towards this VOR or not and then we will set a heading in order to uh, move in the right direction of this VOR okay so now I'm back once again and uh, you can hear the beep the Morse code uh, this is the same uh, Morse code that's mentioned over here in sky vector 113.70 113.70 okay so it means we are in the range of this VOR and you can see uh, now the course of this VOR and plus the DME the distance le left DME as I told you before it's the distance measuring equipment and this VOR is equipped with the DME so that's why you can see the distance it's now 87.4 nautical miles away now as we are tuned into this VOR you can also see this rectangular box over here. Uh, now what I'll do is this. Uh, this is by the way known as the course direction indicator, CDI. Okay, what I'll do is this. We are slightly off. We should be flying in this direction. We are slightly off. What I'll do is this. I'll uh, change the heading. 
and I will fly towards this box. Once you are away from, um, if, if it's on your right, you fly towards right. If it's on your left, you fly towards left. And then you adjust your course. So now I will uh, fly slightly towards this uh, rectangular box. Make small changes, not big changes. And once it is aligned with this solid line, then you can just change the heading back to 202. Now just imagine, actually there is an imaginary line. If we draw this imaginary line and you are supposed to fly on this line, you were slightly off from this line. So you are flying towards this line. And once you are on this line, then you will start to um, fly towards this line. Uh, now once uh, we have uh, covered some distance, you will see a little deviation. See, we were coming in like this and now we have started to turn towards right. Uh, now we are aligned so let's uh, change the heading to two two once again and now you can see that this box has now moved inwards we are slightly off again so let's uh, fly towards 208 once again just giving you the basics if you right now at this point in time if you press the VOR LOC button uh, the plane will automatically adjust the heading in such a way that you are flying in this direction then no need to change the heading manually and, and use this heading selector. But right now as we are learning how to fly the plane on VR navigation, that's why I'm using this option. Otherwise, you can also use the VR LOC. However, I will be activating this option once we are near the runway and we are performing an ILS. So now um, this box is aligned, this rectangular box. And then I will now fly towards 2 or 2. And you will see that we are perfectly aligned with the course and we are flying in the right direction. You can see the adjustments that I've made over here in order to be in a straight line towards uh, this, the Rahimya Khan VOR. This is Multan. So we will be crossing Multan from here. Exactly like this as shown in the sky vector. It will be on your left. And this is how we are going to cross Multan. And as now, uh, let me tell you one more thing as we are at now 38,000 feet. Now my speed is 0 0.80 mark. Uh, so that's how you uh, set your uh, heading in such a way that you keep on flying in the right direction, in the right course. And uh, now the DME says it's 64 uh, miles away. Once we are near this uh, VOR, uh, this uh, uh, rectangular ball will, uh, will uh, move away from it, depend depending upon the direction in which the VOR is. Now VOR, this... Uh, this uh, uh, VOR, the uh, radio frequency from where, uh, the station from where this radio frequency is generated, it depends whether it's on your left or on your right. So if it's on your left uh, and you are passing this VOR, then this bar will move towards left. And if it's on your right, then the bar will move towards right. So there will be a big deviation over here, which will tell you that you are now uh, crossing this VOR. What I have uh, uh, examined in uh, explain 11 is this, that... Uh, uh, once this uh, uh, DME is indicated, uh, the distance, it is always uh, not, it is always not more than 100 knots. Uh, so after every 100 knots, the counter is reset. But right now you are seeing that you feel that it's uh, 57 nautical miles away. Let's see what happens because once I was flying towards the Nawabshah uh, VOR, the second VOR over here. So this distance is more than 100 nautical miles. So the counter resets. The Once I cross Rahimya Khan, it will give tell me that it's 100 nautical miles away. But halfway, the counter will reset again and it will again tell me that I'm uh, 100 nautical miles away. So the best way to uh, to know that v uh, if you're um, nearing this uh, VOR is this that uh, once you are near th uh, this VOR, this box will uh, will change its position because you will be flying over it. And if it doesn't change, then it means um, 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 uh, your counter will reset over here. So let's see what happens. Bit tricky. Uh, it's not that easy. I've been also um, playing around a lot with this uh, stuff, with the VOR thing, and I've learned few things. And 
um, let's see uh, now we are flying towards the VOR and uh, once we cross the VOR we will be flying away from the VOR so this is what we have to check so let's uh, keep um, uh, an eye on this heading uh, on this distance and let's see what happens before this um, let's do one more thing let's tune in the next uh, VOR the next VOR is Navabsha and it's 112.90 so let's uh, dial in the frequency over here 112.90 now once I've crossed uh, the Rahimia Khan VOR this one this VOR I will then use this flip-flop button to make this frequency the active frequency right now this is the active frequency this is the ideal frequency so once I press this button then we will be dialed in to the Navabsha VOR and then we will change the heading and fly towards Navabsha 38 nautical miles to go you can even see the name of the VOR that's RK RK is Rahim Yakhan VOR you can see it over here RK 113.70 RK now it's roughly uh, 10 miles to go uh, so we will see that uh, once we are near this VOR uh, will it uh, will this bar move towards uh, left or right and then we can uh, see that or the counter resets or not because RK should be here and the distance should be decreasing it means we are moving towards this VOR now we are getting slightly off the course so let's adjust the heading and uh, adjust in such a way that we are moving towards uh, the VOR we are in the right direction if there is no drastic change in this uh, in this bar and the distance is decreasing over here and it resets to 100 nautical miles or 90 nautical miles then it means there is still uh, some way to go for this VOR now as we have also dialed in uh, the second uh, frequency over here the idle what I what if I also dial in this frequency 112.90 over here and let's see what happens 112.90 so let's dial in this frequency over here 112.90 and use this flip flop button now on the navigation tool and uh, this 112.90 the next VOR is the active frequency and what if I press this button VOR2 uh, yeah. uh, yes now over here you will also see uh, the distance of the uh, second VOR okay the, the, the VOR over here so for this option you all have to dial in the frequency for the next VOR that's the Navabsha VOR 112.90 over here it's the idle frequency in the navigation one and in the navigation two it is the active frequency so that's why we can also see that how far the second VOR is you see now the direction um, sorry the DME has now reset to 95 or 96 nautical miles and still the distance is decreasing so it means we are still uh, 94 miles away from the Rahimia Khan VOR that is the RK VOR so that's why we are just flying in the right direction right now I'm heading in 199 degrees because um, still this rectangular bar is slightly off it means we are slightly off the course we have to adjust this course and uh, once uh, let's change it to 196 so right now I'm just visualizing and I'm just pretending that we don't have a map we don't have any GPS uh, we cannot see where we are going and only uh, this uh, DME and this uh, uh, VOR and its course is our actual visibility of the flight plan so that's how you do it otherwise we could have just opened the map and see that how far we are from the RK VOR and here is the RK VOR okay we could have even flown towards Multan and then we could have taken this uh, this route towards this VOR but we are flying directly we ignored Multan VOR because Multan VOR doesn't give us the direction uh, the, the distance So now this is aligned with the solid line so we can now change the heading to 202 degrees so 
So now we are flying straight. towards the RKVR. Let's open the map just to tell you. So we are now heading in the right direction. So you can see that this is almost a straight line in which you should be heading. And as soon as we are near the Navabsha uh, VOR, we will also see uh, the, uh, the distance and the, the, the course and the heading. Uh, so sorry, the course over here. So let's wait for it. Still uh, 76 uh, miles to go. And I will be back once we are near at the Rahim Yal Khan uh, VOR. Okay, so here we are once again. And we can see that we are slightly deviating from the course. Uh, so let's uh, change the heading and fly towards left because this box is the rectangular box this uh, on the, your CDI the course direction indicator uh, you, It is on your left. So you have to fly towards left in order to correct the course and fly in the right direction uh, 26 uh, 25 uh, miles uh, 26 rather roughly um, uh, miles to go So now we are flying uh, in this direction and now you can see the VOR2 has also started to appear on the screen, uh, which is, uh, I think, 218 degrees in this direction. So our next um, uh, point will be uh, this. We will be flying towards this VOR, and we will uh, make this frequency 112.90 as a primary frequency. Right now, 113.70 is our primary frequency. And over here on this uh, second uh, navigation panel, uh, radio frequency, we have 112.90 as the active frequency. So the so now we can see Rahim Yal Khan over here. Now let's change it to 202. So now as you can see that now we are flying in the right direction, 19 miles to go. A quick changes to be made. So before this, uh, let's uh, look at it. So Rahim Yal Khan RK is 113.70 uh, and the next Nawabsha is 112.90. So the VOR2 has this direction. It is again 80.1 uh, nautical miles away. But as soon as we are near Nawabsha, it will reset again to 95 or 96 again. And now we will see. But as soon as we are near uh, the RKVR, you will see there, is a, there will be huge deflection in this, in this bar. As we will be flying above uh, this point. And what is the heading of the next VOR? The heading of the next VOR from, from Rahim Yal Khan is, if we select this world low, we can see the reading of this radiate and it's 218 degrees which is here 218 roughly okay so no need to even go and check so that's the advantage of setting uh, the radio frequency for the vr2 because then we will know the heading and the, the distance of uh, this point that is nh nawabsha okay so 11.7 nautical miles to go and uh, now you will see a huge deflection i think roughly when three nautical miles or four nautical miles are left so let's wait for it After Nawabsha, I will also start the descent towards the runway, and uh, then we will uh, make some adjustments for the for the final approach for the ILS instrument landing system. Eight point nine nautical miles to go. Everything is looking good so far. We are heading in the right direction. The flight is going good so far. You can see that now we are exactly going to fly over this VOR and it is going to be on our right side slightly towards the right side so you will see a deflection in the bar it will move towards right hopefully if I'm not wrong so this is how it will happen I can see there's a there's a deflection let's move towards 202 it will be huge deflection you, you will know not the slight the way it's moving right now now okay so uh, yes so if i keep it at 202 just to tell you now you can see there is a huge deflection uh, as we were moving right away now six nautical miles i uh, see there's a huge deflection so it means now we have passed this uh, vr okay so now and uh, plus the distance will now start to increase 
Six. So it means now we have crossed this um, this VR, and now we are heading towards the Nawab Shah VR. You can see that we have crossed. So if the distance is decreasing, it means we are moving towards it, and if the distance is increasing, it means we have moved away from it. So now as uh, we have now crossed this VR, so it's time to make 112.90 our primary frequency. Let's switch to 112.90. Now we have uh, changed this frequency to 112.90. Heading course should be 218. You can see that. You see that that was the advantage of setting the VOR2. So it gives you the direction the heading as well. View, view. And plus, let's change the heading to 218 as well. So now we are heading in the right direction. And here we go. So everything is set now. So we are two. Now what what we are going to do? Now what we are going to do is this: that we are going to now set uh, the Karachi VOR. Let's uh, change it to World VFR Karachi VOR as uh, the uh, the uh, the, uh, the, uh, the frequency for the second navigation video over here, as we have done it before as we were moving towards the Nawab Shah. So this is what I'm going to do. So now over here in the idle side. In the navigation one, I'm going to tune into the Karachi VOR. Now let's open the airport chart for Karachi. Uh, mostly the people ask me from where I get the, these airport charts. I find find them on Google. So simply search in OPKC space airport chart space PDF. If you'll write it down like this, you will get these airport charts. And just to let you know, these airport charts are not for the real life, only for the navigation purpose. They are solely for the purpose of the um, for the navigation. So let's move on to VOR, a page which says VOR 25 left. I'm landing at 25 left. So I will select RNAV. RNAV, no, no, no. We are looking for a VOR 25 left. So this is the VOR. If you see this diagram over here, this mark. So this VOR, the very high frequency omnidirectional range radio, is placed just before the runways over here. And uh, the frequency for this VOR is 112.1. So let's dial in this frequency, 112.1. Okay. And over here, also dial in this frequency, 112.1. Okay. And make this frequency the active frequency. Now, again, in the VOR2, you will see that nothing is appearing, which means. Uh, that we are still far away uh, from the uh, from the Karachi VOR. We are not near the Karachi VOR. Okay. Very simple, very basic. So as we are away from it, one one two point one zero. That's why uh, you cannot see anything over there. Okay. Now the heading of this uh, this runway is two hundred and fifty four degrees. Initially, what we were doing, we initially what we were doing was, was this that you know we uh, from every point there was a radial and there was a direction and we were flying in that direction, but over here if we fly in this direction, after Nawab Shah, if you can just change to world low and you can read the reading on this radial, it's 219 degrees, but obviously if we'll keep on flying in 219 degrees we are going to uh, reach the runway in this direction. So we have to visually uh, look at the runway and then then land. Uh, but the if we if we want to land on these runways, we should be coming in in this direction. We should be coming in like this, not coming in like this, because if we are coming in like this as well, then we have to take a very steep right turn and then land, which is going to be a dangerous thing. And plus, I will be also performing an ILS. So I want to uh, want to come in like this instead of like this. So if I set my heading to 219 degrees, then obviously I'm not going to. Uh, land the plane uh, as per the ILS, we will not be catching the glide slope and there's going to be an issue. So for the final approach, what we're going to do is this, we're going to use uh, this heading of the runway instead of the using uh, the one on the sky vector. So a point to remember that while flying uh, VOR navigation from one VOR to one another VOR, we can fly in the heading that's provided by the sky vector over here in this radio. Uh, but once we are nearing uh, the uh, 
but once we are near the uh, the the final runway then we have to use the heading of the runway so if you look at the VOR runway 25 left the heading is 254 and 112.1 1. so this is the point that you have to remember this was the basic and if you do this you will face no issues again we can see this thing uh, that uh, the distance from the Navabsha NHVOR is 21.8 miles away We're slightly off the course as you can see this rectangular bar is slightly off the course so we're going to set it to 220 210 heading should be set like this we will fly towards left and once it is aligned then we can again fly start to fly towards 218 just to be on the right course so this is how we can adjust the heading and i told you before that if you're using the view or loc button then you don't have to even change the heading the heading will be automatically set by the plane and the plane will fly in the right direction this is just to give you an idea how to uh, manually adjust the heading and what's the difference between the course and the heading okay so i think these were the basics and uh, hopefully uh, if you are following all these from points you will be able to fly your plane easily without uh, getting into the hassle of entering the flight plan into the fms and then flying your plane because uh, most of the time people don't um, uh, really uh, find the SID and the SAR for the uh, flight plans and it's a difficult thing to do and finding a right flight plan at times is difficult so if you, if you want to fly from one airport to another and you use the VR navigation it's very simple for you and uh, you can use any plane you can use Cessna, you can use Cirrus SF50 or any other plane in X-Plane 11 uh, to do the VR navigation in the, in the future I might be doing another video uh, for the Cessna and uh, we'll let you know how to do this viewer navigation in Cessna but right now I was using uh, this Boeing 737-800 for this purpose though it's a very advanced machine and very advanced flight plans can be made with this plane but so far just to let you know how to do this viewer navigation I'm using this uh, this model because it's the default model it's easy to fly not that complicated so 6.5 miles to go we will not see a huge deflection and we will not see the distance increasing rather um, this counter will reset again i know this thing because i've been flying it a lot i've been practicing that's the advantage the pilots get that they fly um, the route so many times that they learn everything so they know what's happening and that's the case with me i've been flying on this route for a very long time so I know in the flight simulator that how it behaves. So you can see there's no huge uh, deflection in this bar as uh, we are almost near to this uh, run um, to this VR as you can see it over here. And now uh, this DME will reset. It will reset again to 99, 95. Let's see what happens. No deflection and we are, it means we are away. See, 99.9. So this is how it hap uh, this is how it works. So still uh, 99 miles to go. Uh, so let's wait for it uh, just uh, before this VR we will start our descent and uh, then we will move towards the Karachi VR which is tuned in over here 112.10 112.10 and right now no distance is coming because we are very far from the KC or from the Karachi uh, VR but once we are near this uh, VR you will start to see the distance and then another green arrow will start coming over here which will give us the direction but uh, we will be heading in the direction of 254 degrees because we want to uh, come in like this we want to be we want to be on this course we want to be coming like this so that we can catch the glide slope and perform an ILS so we will not be flying like this we will be flying like this so this is the basic thing that you have to remember uh, so let's wait for it and then we will see right now we were just uh, going off the course a bit and uh, i'm adjusting the course and right now you can also see uh, that view r2 is also in the range the kc dme uh, is giving us the distance of uh, 60 miles and uh, nawabsha is 57. obviously uh, karachi is away from nawabsha so obviously this is going to reset at uh, zero and then it will s reset to i think 95 99 again uh, but the direction you can see the VR2 is giving us uh, the heading of 218 again the same thing which you can see over here 
219 or 218 so the plane will be flying in this direction if you follow the VR2 direction but obviously we will be following this course this heading 254 and 112.1 is the frequency 112.1 you can see 112.1 112.1 and uh, that's the basic and uh, now we are good so let's turn 218 okay when 10 nautical miles will be left I will be uh, uh, obviously st uh, starting the descent okay so uh, now less than uh, 20 miles to go uh, to the Nawabsha uh, VOR which is over here and then further I think uh, further 120 miles to go as well uh, to the Karachi airport uh, so we will not start a descent and uh, um, let's uh, set the heading first because we are slightly deviating off the course you can see this rectangular bar has moved towards the left so let's adjust uh, the heading reduce the speed to 0 0.66 uh, mark uh, when we were uh, ascending or we were uh, climbing up to 38,000 feet you must have observed that while crossing the 30,000 feet mark the speed in mark was 0 0.66 so I want to reduce the speed so that I can extend the flaps because flaps uh, provide uh, lift and drag at uh, the lower speed which helps you um, in, in reducing the speed during the descent and uh, let's look at uh, the altitude to which we will be descending uh, just uh, before the runway we should be at 3000 feet let's now move to uh, the ILS approach for the runway 25 left I think we can see it over here it's somewhere here ILS 25 right 25 right ILS 25 right, ILS 25 right, 25 ILS or ALOC runway 25 left heading is 254 same as the VR but the ILS DME is different ILS DME means instrument landing system uh, distance measuring equipment so ILS DME is 109.7 but the VR is um, oh, sorry I forgot the VR is 112.10 uh, as I've uh, said it in the idle frequency uh, so uh, till the time we are near the runway we will fly uh, in the direction of this uh, VR and uh, then one, once we are near the runway I think uh, 10 or 15 miles away from the runway uh, then we will switch this frequency to the ILS but so far uh, we will fly towards the VR and then we will switch towards ILS to, uh, to the ILS and you will see the difference what happens now you can see this bar moving drastically away through the right it means we have now crossed Nawabsha and the DME is also started to increase so it's time uh, to set the the, uh, the course uh, so right now I will uh, make this frequency as the active frequency 112.10 and set the course to 254 okay and now the heading to 254 and uh, similarly we will start a descent because uh, let me give you an example over here uh, you should be at 2100 uh, for the uh, for the glide slope for the ILS okay so 2100 we will set this altitude to 2100 oops got a bit carried away <laughs> and uh, let's set the vertical speed now the descent has also started Oops. again got carried away you have to maintain your vertical speed in such a way that your speed doesn't increase because you don't want to uh, your speed to increase while descending so now uh, it's slightly increasing 1700 let's keep it at minus uh, 1600 now you can see that we are way off the course uh, we are flying uh, 254 but this rectangular bar is way way off the, off the course so instead of flying towards 254 I will start to fly directly towards this line I will tell you what actually I'm doing this comes uh, uh, with, with some experience now the basics what I'm going to actually do so if we actually on this map we cannot uh, we cannot see it okay this 
This is the Karachi Airport, 154. Yes, we are doing it the right way. 112.10. Are we <laughs> flying in the right direction? Hold on. 112.10. Okay, yes. Can we hear this frequency? Yes, we can hear the KC frequency. Let's check the map where we are actually going. You see, now we have actually started to uh, fly. We cannot see Karachi because, as I told you before, that in X Plane 11 maps uh, there is some issue over here. So we can, uh, what we are actually doing, that instead of flying out like this, we have an imaginary line uh, like this, which is in the direction of the runway. So this is the imaginary line. So now what we're going to do is this, we are actually going to fly towards this imaginary line straight away. And then once we intercept this line, then we will start to fly towards this direction, as you can see over here. So I'm, uh, now if I move my heading directly towards it, so it means I'm going to straight away intercept this line over here. As now we are descending, the altitude is 34,000 feet. You can see the vertical speed is minus 1600. And uh, we are descending at a good rate. Let's uh, lower the flap by two notches so that the speed is controlled. And I can further increase the vertical speed because uh, we are nearing the airport. Let's do one more last, last thing. Let's enter this uh, eyeless frequency in the idle phase, in the idle uh, side of the, the navigation 109.7 if, if I'm not wrong I always forget 109.7 so I will enter it over here 109.7 109.7 and over here also in the navigation to 109.7 so again I'm going to do one thing uh, in the in the navigation one I'm going to keep uh, the ILS DME as the idle frequency and the navigation two I'm going to keep it as the active frequency so that I can track it. I'm also going to press this button so as soon as we are near the ILS DME, I can also hear it, the sound and we can then convert to uh, the ILS approach. Okay? And you can see at VOR2 we cannot see anything but once we are near uh, the ILS uh, uh, DME, we will see the distance over here, the course and everything. It's obviously 254 so we'll be seeing that if you look at the map you can see that now we have started to fly towards the runway. So that's how we're going to approach Karachi. And this imaginary line is somewhere here. This line. So I'm going to intercept this line and then turn right to perform an ILS. Thirty one thousand feet. Speed is under control. Time to ch change it to 200. Let's keep it at 240. I've now uh, changed the speed from Mach to nautical miles. Once this uh, uh, this rectangular bar will start to move in in the middle, then I will start to fly in the direction of 254 degrees, which is straight towards the runway. So far, everything is going good. So we have uh, the ILS frequency adjusted as idle over here in navigation 1 and active in navigation 2. And I've also pressed this button because once I'm near the runway, I will hear the beeps. It means I'm near the runway and I will turn it off. I will make this frequency as the active frequency and then we will press the APP button and the ILS approach will start the instrument landing system approach press M and I'm just showing you the map uh, just to tell you what actually I'm doing and how the things will be soon we will be intercepting this imaginary line and then we will turn left right at 254 degrees you can see this is where we should be going. But right now we are moving in the direction of 174 degrees to intercept this line. 
Okay, now you can see uh, that this rectangular bar has started to move towards the center. So it means soon we are going to intercept this imaginary line over here. And then I will turn right in the heading of 254 degrees in order to uh, move towards the runway in the right direction. And as soon as we are near the runway, uh, when this distance will appear over here on the VR2, then we will switch to ILS approach and then we will land the plane. Everything is looking good so far. 19,000 feet is the altitude. Now I will be also uh, navigating on VR LOC. You could have even done it befo way before and instead of changing the headings and uh, uh, selecting this option, you could have selected VR LOC and you, then you can have uh, selected the course and the, the radio frequency uh, and the plane would have automatically uh, flown towards the right course. But uh, just to give you a demonstration, I was uh, changing the heading manually, but you could have even done it before as well. Uh, so as it is moving over here, the moment I will turn right, I will also change it to VR LOC uh, because now we want exactly uh, um, uh, line of sight of the runway and we want to be aligned with the runway uh, so that uh, there is no issues. We are also horizontally and vertically aligned with the runway. Now, let's change the heading to 254. Now this bar is in the center and you can see on the map that now we have started to move towards this runway. We have now intercepted this imaginary line and soon we will be heading towards the runway in the right direction. We should have uh, turned earlier uh, because now we are slightly off the course as soon as the plane uh, will stop to turn we will be off the course this as this bar is on the right for this i will be turning on the vr loc and then we will be aligned with the runway uh, 57 uh, miles to go let's reduce uh, the vertical speed and keep it at 1800 12000 feet to go roughly okay now we are off the course, so I can now adjust the heading manually and uh, I can uh, follow this course, but right now let's uh, get ourselves out of this hassle and press VR, VR LOC. The moment I press this VR LOC, you will see the plane is automatically turning and it will then, uh, the autopilot will automatically align it with the, uh, uh, with the runway. We are coming in good so far, no issues. Only one mistake in the beginning when I forgot to press the vertical speed button. Uh, but anyhow. Now after this uh, left turn, we will be almost aligned with the runway. Let's uh, look at the map. You see? So this is the this is the imaginary line that I've drawn. Okay? <laughs> and this is the line. So now the plane is automatically correcting its course and it will be on this line. That's the advantage of using VOI LOC. Just to show you. Now you can see the VOR2 has also started to come, uh, which is 49.3 uh, miles away. I will be switching to APP just 10 miles away from the one there. Okay. So you can see this, uh, the VR2, the uh, ILS DME, the ILS uh, radio frequency is also in this direction. And the plane is now correcting the course. The autopilot is correcting the course. Soon the heading uh, over here will change to 254 to from 257. Once the course is corrected, thanks to VOR LOC, we don't have to do this manually. We could have done this manually as well, but that's the right way to do it. Okay. 
No, no need to worry about anything. The best thing about uh, using the viewer navigation is uh, that throughout the flight, you are attentive. Uh, because if you're flying totally on autopilot, you've entered your waypoints, you've entered the, the flight path, and uh, the plane just keeps on following it, and uh, things get boring a bit. But uh, somehow, if you're using the viewer navigation, you are completely engaged and you're just playing around with the, uh, with the radio frequencies and with heading and with the course, which keeps you active. And uh, I also enjoy flying by VOR. It's, it's kind of amazing. It just keeps the fun. Uh, let's reduce the vertical speed to minus 1500. Uh, how far we are. So 109.7 of uh, the ILS DME is uh, the idle frequency over here in NAV1 and NAV2 it is the active frequency. I've pressed this button for NAV2. You can see it's written NAV2. So the moment we are near uh, this ILS uh, DME or the ILS uh, uh, which you can even call the localizer which uh, horizontally and vertically aligns the plane with the runway for the um, for the landing you will hear this beep the Morse code for this ILS. Here is the Morse code I think yes this is the Morse code. So you can see uh, in this airport chart, this is the ILS uh, frequency and this is the frequency of the VR, 112.1. So this real over here, this is the this sign is for the VR. At Marvi, at Marvi flight level 5000 and at this point D6.3, just right here, we should be at 2100 and then we will catch the glide slope. So after D6.3 we will be uh, catching the glide slope which will which will vertically and horizontally align uh, the plane with the runway. No need to worry about anything. 34 let's reduce the vertical speed a bit. can see that we are totally aligned with the runway. Can we see the runway? No. Right now we cannot see the runway. 31 miles to go. 5600 is the altitude. 240 knots is the speed. Just before the Landing, I will reduce the speed to 140. You can also see the distance has also gone from here. You cannot see the distance. It means uh, we're still far away from this uh, radio frequency. Four thousand eight hundred. Let's reduce it a bit also. Let's open the map. Now you can see the VOR LOC has aligned us with the runway twenty five. Everything is looking good so far. 25 miles to go.
Uh, now we can hear the frequency of the eyeless. So it means uh, the eyeless DME is near. Okay. Let's turn this off. Let's reduce the speed to 100 and initially let's keep it at 160. 1000 feet to go, level off. Let's uh, turn off this frequency because we'll be then hearing this beep constantly. I can lower the flap by one more notch. Let's uh, reconfirm the ILS DME 109.7. Check 109.7. 109.7. This is good. Everything is looking good so far. 15. Miles to go. Leveling off at two thousand one hundred. Thirteen miles to go. Let's switch to this frequency, 109.7. Okay. The moment I've uh, switched to uh, this frequency, 109.7, you will see the plane has again started to make some adjustments because initially we were tuned into the VOR. The VOR is not exactly aligned with the 25 left. It's somewhere here in the middle of these runways. So that's why now the plane is adjusting its course because right now it's aligning itself with the uh, 25 left. You can see uh, these two diamonds now over here. One is the horizontal, another one is the vertical. Horizontal means that we are horizontally aligned with the runway. It's straight in the line and vertically means that we are slightly higher. Uh, we, I told you before that at this point, at uh, D6.3, at this waypoint, we should be at 2100. Uh, we are slightly far, no need to worry about that. This is the glide slope error below glide slope. We are actually above the glide slope and we are still far. No need to worry about that. And you can see everything has now disappeared from here. Uh, so no need to worry about anything. If I turn this on, what will happen? Yeah, we cannot see the distance now. All we can see is here is the runway, the 25 lift. So the runway is there. Let's adjust the view a bit. The moment uh, this uh, diamond is over here, in the middle, I will press the APP button and then the plane will follow the glide slope for a perfect eyeless. see all the lights are red because we are slightly high Has the diamond started to move yes we have to wait for it to come in the middle and then press APP you will see the plane will start to descend and then I will reduce the speed to 140 knots and I will lower the gears the approach, lower the gears, reduce the speed. Uh, so that's how you uh, do the viewer navigation and you can uh, then you will use the eyeless approach. I hope uh, this tutorial was uh, really helpful for you and uh, I told you before in the beginning as well 
that this is totally for the beginners, for those who don't know how to fly and they're new to the simulation. If you are an experienced pilot, I think this is not the right video for you. And if you've been watching it throughout the time, thank you very much for staying with me. And uh, do leave your comments and uh, do let me know uh, if you want me to do um, another flight or another technique and if uh, something that you want to learn. I can try it on my own and then I can uh, try to uh, make a video for you guys. Okay, so the speed is now under control, flaps are now by three notches, and uh, plane is coming on the glide slope, everything is looking good so far, now I will soon be engaging the autopilot and I will take the control and try to land the plane. Thank you very much. thrust and here you go just uh, except for the one bump everything <laughs> was perfectly right by the brakes and uh, that's how you perform an ILS in XP11 and uh, you um, do the what you say the viewer navigation Hopefully you would have learned something from this video and uh, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and uh, do leave a comment um, if you want me to do anything else and if you want me to try something else in, in Experience 11. Thank you very much for staying with me. Hope to see you soon.